We are live, my friend. Hey. <laughs> Greg, I, <laughs> I'm excellent. Um, hard times, but a lot to be grateful for. Most definitely, yeah. Kind of makes you reflect now, like, you know, I think uh, we all love to dance. Obviously, we all love to do what we do, but whoo, now it really, you had to do a good deep check in that sense, you know, to really understand why we do it, you know, and um, yeah, it's, it's been tough. I'm not going to lie, but also in the same breath too, it really kind of has sparked that little passion again, you know, maybe that the redundancy of every week or everything happens. And all of a sudden you're like, I, I want, you know, I want to go teach a bunch of, you know, 300 juniors in a room, you know, come on, bring <laughs> them, let's go, you know, where 8.30 on a Sunday morning might be tough sometimes, but now it's like, I, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's do this. <laughs> so I get it, my friend. Yeah. We jumped right in there. We're in uh, these new times and you're dealing with it and every listener out there is dealing with it. Before we get into the heavy talk here. No worries. <laughs> Tell everybody a little bit about yourself and your journey in entertainment, teaching, etc. Um, well, it's it's. Uh, I guess. I mean, I'll give you the, the short synopsis. You know, <laughs> I I'll go born... deeper. I promise. Yeah, no, no, no. But um, I grew up small farm town in Ohio, and uh, uh, I took my mom worked at a dance studio, and then when I was about eleven or twelve, she opened up a dance studio and. My brother, he was older, as you guys know, like both you and your brother know, you guys have through Dance Masters, uh, you know, and he he was into dance, but not all like inundated with dance, you know, he just was always around it and he didn't really start, you know, like he was always good at it naturally. And then when he went to college, that's when he really, ex you know, expanded and explored and, you know, worked more the professional aspect of it. But um, I was very lucky because I had him to kind of look up to because he's seven years older than me. So what that, did he do? I didn't mean to interrupt you, but oh, since no. we're going here, what did he continue to tap? Oh, he did a lot more than tap. He was everything. In fact, like uh, he was good at tap, but his main thing was like ballet and contemporary. And he graduated with a degree in dance from University of Akron. And then um, he ended up uh, doing like Les Sophies and Baby John from West Side Story. And then he was uh, over in Vienna, which was the baby cast of uh, the creator and owner, like um, he went over to Vienna, Austria, and he was Tumble Brutus and Cats. And uh, so, yeah, so he was, you know, highly successful and, uh, you know, obviously an overall versatile dancer. Back in our day, you had to be versatile. So, <laughs> yes, <laughs> you did everything we well. <laughs> so. um, I just learned something about you as you were doing your little intro. I knew you had a brother and I knew he danced, but I didn't know that he had been a professional dancer does he still dance and what's yeah, his name him, uh well he met his his name's robert russell he lives in australia not austria australia because he met his wife it's funny that's a great story they they were doing laundry they lived in the same facility and she was the ballerina in phantom of the opera and so they met doing laundry and then he asked her out and that's if you know my brother that's totally not what he does <laughs> so obviously he was smitten and uh so yeah they ended up uh, they got married they had a child there and then they moved back to uh, australia where she's from because she worked a lot with this train with sydney ballet company and everything and now they own a studio and i want to say they're 26 27th year and a woi woi umina beach which is about an hour north of sydney so and so uh and he has three kids and the, they all dance like Karina is his youngest but, or his oldest. But uh, Daniel is uh, he's in New York right now because he he was Billy Elliot for a long time. He was one of the Billy Elliot's that toured uh, the United States. And then now he just did the West Side Story movie with Spielberg and stuff. So kind of a spitting image of his dad. So, yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. So but they're all three great kids in their own right. And so it's, it's you know, but okay, I know. Um Mm -hmm. I'm learning something. Tell everybody, because we're going there. You have a daughter now, right? I, I say do. now. You have a daughter that's probably, I'll guess. All right. Six? No, no. She acts like she's 26, but she's four. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so yes, yes. Um, was... Tell me uh, to, and tell our viewers a little bit about your family. I'll call it your new family. Yeah. Well, um, I, uh, when I was on tour, a convention tour and stuff, which I'm still doing, but 
Um, I'll, I, I met my wife, Tessa, at, you know, at the time we were just, you know, um, she was a, a dancer and she was company, like she ran the company at the studio that she worked at. And um, uh, the story is funny is that she, um, the, the studio that she worked at, they wanted myself and two other people to come and teach a workshop at their studio, like in the summertime, a little intensive thing. And so they all split up and she got me. And it's funny if, you know, I won't name names, but my other two friends at the time, they're, they're very into a lot about talking dance and don't get me wrong. I love it. But, you know, once I'm done like judging or whatever, I like to have just like normal real time now. And so I would just sit in there watching Lakers on TV, having dinner. And so she comes over and she's like, you like basketball? And I'm like, why don't you? And we just started like talking about politics and everything. And then finally she was like, well, um, we'd like to have you come to the studio. And it literally was 30 seconds. I'm like, sure, I'm game. Anyways, let's go back to Alabama football. What are you talking about there? And so over the next like maybe 18 months, I went to the studio, we started talking more and then, you know, things happened and then got married. And then that's when I started realizing, you know, do I need to be in LA? You know, like, you know, I, I love what I'm doing, but I, this is, you know, somebody that I've truly met that I can see myself for the rest of my life with that next level. And so, um, yeah, so I ended up packing my stuff in my, my little VW Passat and I <laughs> drove across country. And then soon after that, we had Lucy Claire. So, so yeah. Did you say Lucy Claire? Lucy Claire Russell. Yes. Mm hmm. You're proud of that, aren't you, Mike? Yeah, well, she's as dramatic as her name. Trust me. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I love her to death. Yeah. <laughs> what did becoming a father change about Greg Russell? <laughs> you know, it's funny. I don't mean to sound cliche, but um, this is the thing. It used to be my life. Now it's the life. And there's a big difference in... You know, it's, it used to be, oh, it's for me. It's what I need to do for everything. And now it's like, no, this is the life. This is, I will, you know, do whatever it takes to provide for my family. I know I have to take care of myself. You know, you can't, you know, put water on a fire if the bucket's empty. I get that. But same breath is, you know, I, the sacrifices that maybe I would have questioned making before won't even question if it is for the greater good of my family. And, um, you know, just... That's pretty much what it is, you know, it's a whole. <laughs> I love that about you and know that uh, you and I, I was going to say this in the beginning, but we kind of just jumped into it. Yeah, why not? <laughs> I feel like I have known you my whole life. I know I'm older than you, <laughs> but, <laughs> but like we grew up together, all right? Yeah. Like I watched you, you watched me. Yeah. I saw who you were, where you came from, Ohio. The, the, the strong mom. <laughs> and I remember you dancing with your studio. I remember you maybe, I don't know if it was ADA titles or DMA titles. Mm -hmm. It was one of that where all great guys got together yeah, to yeah. dance. Those were the good times, yeah. <laughs> Weren't they? It was the best. Yeah, it was. Yeah, you're right. And the thing is, we were competitive, but we also respected everybody. Like, you know, if somebody would kick your butt, You'd be like, I'm going to get you next time. That, that <laughs> yeah, exactly. Play. And then we go in class and, you know, pal around and take class together. Like it was no animosity or I have to be the best. Everybody could be great at the same time. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Everybody, uh, here's a statement that helped me get back on track that I'll say to everybody that runs through my mind. Do you know that you can be good and others could be good too? <laughs> At the same time. <laughs> yeah, like you don't have to be better. They... Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, no, there's no better. It's just, there's no ladder up and down. It's just out. <laughs> That's how I look at it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm taking you back because I know some of this already. Uh, <laughs> grew up in a studio uh, or your mother started what, at what age when she owned it? Um, I don't know what age she was. I know I was like 11 or 12. And, That's what I meant, you. Oh, yeah, no, no. <laughs> like, I don't want no, you to I'm tell your mother's age. Don't do that. <laughs> no, but um, no, she actually started it in her garage. And I know, like, like, back in the day, that was it. But we used to, especially winter Ohio's, we lived at the, the bottom of a snow belt. And so sometimes, like, you know, at 9 o'clock at night, we'd be pulling up the wood floors and putting them off to the side so we could get the cars in so they wouldn't freeze the next morning, <laughs> you know, like, so we could actually leave the house. So It yeah. was a portable dance studio. 
Assembly, yeah, yeah, but that assembly was required. All the portal floors and all that stuff. My dad and I made the floors, and I mean, that was one great thing. Starting my new studio, and I knew how to build floors. I was telling the contractor, "My, uh, uh-uh, uh, no, 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 no." <laughs> I've got forty some years on you on this. We're not doing that. Let's not do that. <laughs> so. <laughs> So it was in the garage, uh, garage, you were building floors. Where did it go next? Um, well, then over time, because Worcester, Ohio, at, you know, is pretty much a farm town. It's a little bigger than maybe your standard small town USA, but, you know, like it's not that big. <laughs> and so um, she eventually expanded and we found a couple places. And uh, so uh, it just kind of just developed. And I think the most students we ever had, our, our heyday was like 120 um you know but for that area it was good you know it was very good and uh so yeah we just she just uh she the one thing my mom will say and this is what I love about my mom is that she always she did it for opportunities for myself and my brother she goes at the end of the day she goes you know obviously she cared for everybody that came through the studio but she wanted to give us the best opportunity to you know do what we want to do and you know I almost look at it now as almost like vocational education you know when starting when i was 11 or 12 like from running a studio to you know like i get 30 it hours i know you do that's why i say it you know, oh my it. god do it, i get it i mean by the time i was 17 i'm like i know how to kind of run a business here like i mean <laughs> and do school nowadays i can't even imagine i don't know how <laughs> i would have slept for three days <laughs> i used to uh go i started teaching at like 15 in this low income housing project that I yeah. ran like a couple days of classes. I used to go into school because I was in the business course and use their adding machine to prepare my deposits, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. They're teaching people how to make ledgers, which I was learning. But for right, me, yeah. I was already in business. Like, uh, well, I need the yeah. adding machine because I got to make a deposit and pay a couple people. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yes. Yeah, those are the, those are the days. <laughs> but I want to say, um, and I know you'll agree with this part. Not always an easy life. <laughs> no. But as you grow older, you become more grateful for the lessons learned. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Through the process, you understand things you didn't understand. Right. Yeah. No, you're 100% correct on that. Yes. Like a lot of times when I'll teach on convention and, you know, I'll see a kid that, you know, she's in a boot or she's on crutches and she's like, I'm so bummed I can't take your class. And I go, uh uh-uh, kiddo. I go, I want you forever. This is just one day. You know, I go, I know it's tough and I want you to sit here. And sometimes I'll even have them like sit near the stage or on the stage. And I'll just be like, just sit here and take class, you know, Mm. and and just just be a part of it. Because, you know, that is at the time when that, those trial and tribulations happen, how do you, you know, how do you manage it? You know, and I think those are the people that are successful that lemonade out of lemons, you know, I mean, so. <laughs> yeah, lemonade out of lemons. So how'd you, what was your jump out of Ohio? What was your first? Um, well, it was kind of a, a weird, like it kind of happened in, in sections. Uh, okay. When I was 15, um, I ended up uh, getting um, at, there was a local, uh, well, not local, but it was in Canton, Ohio, but it was an equity um, dinner theater, which I don't even know how many of those exist anymore, but it was an equity dinner theater and they brought in Broadway I, shows. I remember some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, they brought in Broadway shows. And so there would be Broadway, you know, like people come in and do that. And 42nd Street came in and what they wanted to do was a promotion. Um, and so they did auditions. And so I was 15. So I was like, shit, you know, why not? Why don't I go? You know, like, what do I got to lose? And uh, so the director was like, are you kidding me? This is awesome. He's perfect for this. But they kind of went back and forth because I was young. And so the contracts would have to be different and all that, you know, but they talked about, hey, you know, this is a great thing for the, you know, it'll fill in the houses and all that. And so long story short, I got the opportunity to do that. And that was a big learning experience for me, especially because, you know, I got to learn original choreography. I got to learn the ins and outs of a show and Broadway and all that. And the director even told me, he goes, you realize that we weren't going to even hire anybody. It was just for like, you know, a ta-da, Broadway show's coming in. Like, you know, like you could be a part of it. Is that 
True. Yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, back in the day, you know, nobody could, you know, call him out on social media. <laughs> you know, like it's just, it was what it was. And so you know, I was like that. And then over time, you know, so I got to learn that part of it. And then my mom, like I said, she was great with doing things for my brother and I and giving us opportunities. And when I was about like 13, 14, she looked at me one day and she goes, I don't know what to do with you, man. She goes, I can keep teaching you jazz and ballet. She goes, but this hip hop thing, this break dance thing you do, I don't have a clue, you know, because this was back in the early mid eighties. And guess she goes, and the same thing with tap, I don't know. All I know is I can give you opportunities. She goes, you've expanded far beyond, you know, what I could give you. I started teaching when I was 13 because she saw that, you know, certain things she was not unable to teach. <laughs> so um, with that said, she started letting me go to like New York to hang out with my brother for like over the summer. I met Henry Latang. I had Debbie D with Dance Olympus and Nancy Nart Stone. And, you know, then I started branching out. So by the time I was 17, that's when I graduated and I was like, you know, let's just go to LA. <laughs> Why not? So. <laughs> I know that uh, his name comes up a lot. So I'm going to just pop this question out. Henry Latang, yeah. what did he mean to you? He, um, I always explain Henry. I do like my dance history classes with Tapton that were in stuff. And cause, uh, and my thing I always says is that he got me excited to do a shuffle. And what I mean by that is that it, he was, he was not about how great are your feet or how great are you? It's how are you going to present yourself so that people love you? And he taught me a lot about that performance aspect of it. He also taught me a lot about choreography. Um, I got to shadow him uh, one summer when I was 16. And so basically I went in and I always love this. I'll never forget. It was like an off Broadway show and I'm sure everyone out there knows, but he was called the doctor of Broadway. And part of the reason why was he would go in and work on a number of part of a show, but he would take no credit for it because he did not want to step on other people's toes, but they would come in and let's say it's like the closing of the first act. They just need it more exciting. And his numbers were always ta-da, you know, and, Hence, uh, you know, you've seen his work. And so I remember shadowing him once and uh, we watched the number and I go, what do you need? You know, Mr. Latang. And he goes, I need an iced coffee. Go give me an iced coffee. And I'm like, uh, oh, okay, here we go. <laughs> I go, not quite what I expected, but let's do this, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, and you would, I know you when, would. When, you know, Yoda talks, you just go, you know? So anyways, and so I went, got an iced coffee 20 minutes later, I get back in. He's like, here, watch this. What do you think? And I watched it and it, already looked like almost a completely different number and then i watched it again he didn't change one step he changed the presentation of the step he, ch he moved angles around he moved people around he changed everything he made it from a two-dimensional here's the choreography to a whole boom and i was like oh my gosh like that's incredible like i mean you know and just certain things like you because tap can be very repetitive he taught me like no don't make it look boring you make it look as exciting. And that's not, I always say it's not selling out, it's selling it. There's a big difference, you know, so. You made a point funny. there I can't let go of. Mm -hmm. Don't you wish we had more people and, and we'll get off this topic because I like to stay up. <laughs> Don't you wish we had more people in our field who didn't have to take the credit? Yeah, mm -hmm. that would be wonderful, yeah. Because, you know, if you're, if you know, if you know you were part of a project, you're part of something, like, I know, like, you know, there's many projects that I've been working with my kids now. It's like, oh, yeah, I got a chance to work on that. Well, we didn't see you in the credits. I'm like, oh, no, that's called a skeleton crew. Trust me. You know, like, you know, I was a part of it, you know, and then they watch it. They're like, oh, I could see that. I'm like, yeah, that's how it works, you know? <laughs> yeah, you don't always have to get credit for something. You can do something to learn from it or just for the kindness of doing it. Or paying your dues. That's my other thing, too. You know, sometimes you got to. Sorry. <laughs> so. Okay, we are going to go off that one <laughs> real fast. Um, I want to go here with you. You have a school, you and your wife, right? Yes, it's uh, called 3D Dance. It's in uh, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. All right, roll tight country. And uh, yeah, we, um, my wife worked at a studio for numerous years. And uh, long story short, she was actually uh, considering giving up dance. She was just frustrated. Uh, just, you know, sometimes it wears out. It's welcome. It's too much. There's other, I'm sure any studio owner out there knows politics, just, you know, like in, in, ins and outs of everything. And so, um, yeah, so she kind of was going to give it up and 
So over the next six weeks, um, let's just say it was, it wasn't the easiest to be around. And so finally I just, we pulled aside one night and I said, Hey, Hey, um, you know, how, how, how you doing? And I go, I just have a question. Is this what it's going to be like now? You know, like, cause you know, you're, you're, I can't fold the laundry correctly. You know, like, you know, like just different things. I'm like, so I just want to know, I just want to be preemptive. Right. And, and, you know, I was very caring. And she just said, I don't want to give up dance. And I was like, there it is. Like, I, you know, I could sense it, but you know, sometimes you just, I know I have to do this. I have to say it out loud to myself. And so I was like, okay, well, what's your dream? And you know, she's like, well, and you know, we all do that. We all kind of start pushing down it right away. And I was yeah. like, you know, one thing I've learned, I'm sure, you know, in business is think three years from now and then work backwards as opposed to work up to that three year. And so I said, what do you see yourself in three years? And she goes, I want to run a dance studio. And I was like, this is why we're together. Like, you know, like, you know, at the time it was like, whoo, okay, here we go. You know, cause it's an adventure. As were you was, married or was it before you oh, were, no, married? We were married? This yeah, we, discussion. Were married already. we already had Lucy Claire and everything. And, you know, so there were a lot of logistics to go, but there always is, you know, the contractors late, you know, <laughs> the water power people can't find us. <laughs> even though. So we're did you there. build a new space or no, build we rented, out? We rented out a space and then we built out. Yeah. And um, we found a really good, the first place we found, which was ideal, like we ended up finding out that the guy like moved to the Caribbean, like, and took a bunch of people's money. And like, it was like one of those things. I'm like, uh, really? You know? And so instead of attaching, is this a sign? We're just like, no, let's go find someplace else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the sign was find a different deal. Yeah. And <laughs> Not that that shouldn't space. happen. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but we found another place and it, it's worked out amazingly. What have you learned about yourself in the process? Because I know you, for a lot of people, saying I'm leaving LA and I'm going to Alabama and I'm going to do this. And I know you're teaching on conventions and you have other professional work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. But you made a big uh, grand jeté across the country. Right. What'd you learn about yourself after you did all of this? Um, I'll be honest with you straight up. Um, it took maybe about a year and a half to accept that I can still be myself, the guy that I was out there in LA and Alabama. And, you know, on a personal note, it just was more of, well, I'm here because, you know, I'm no longer this, I'm no longer that. And I almost kind of lost my confidence a little bit. And then I would kind of allocate to others. But now just literally over the last like year and a half or two, I've started to realize like, you know what? No, I know, you know, excuse me, what the hell I'm doing. You know, like I, you know, I have all this experience, but I'm not maximizing it the way I could to benefit the most for everybody, including myself. So that was probably the biggest punch in the face to me, you know, and then coming along with having a child and things now really has you know, as I'm trying to teach her a lesson, and all of a sudden I look at myself going, oh my God, I'm doing the same thing. Like, I, I you know, like she gets it naturally. <laughs> I mean, duh. Like, she's half me and half my wife. Duh. That's, I mean, you know. So, she a good dancer, dad? <laughs> is she good? Uh, she loves her hip hop and she's, she's very free spirited. Now, I will do, if, they, if I can brag for a moment, and I didn't, we didn't know this. Either. I want you to brag because I know how much this kid means to you. I don't oh, mean well, to call her a kid. Go ahead. Yeah, brag. well, no, you can't. I don't care. I mean, so, um, we don't know because we just see her every day, right? And so one night I come home from late night convention. All of a sudden, <clears throat> she's like on the couch playing or whatever. And so, uh, you know, Tessa goes to bed. And so I'm up with her for a little bit and she's excited. She's like, daddy, look. And she gets out, we have a little xylophone. So she brings out the xylophone. She's like, daddy, listen. And I'm like, oh baby, we got We got to keep it quiet. You know, mom went to sleep. She's like, no. So she starts playing the xylophone and she's doing, she's matching the pitch with her voice. And she hits like the fourth one and she stops and she goes, sorry, daddy. And then she does like, and then she matches it. And she goes all the way through the whole xylophone. And I was like, uh, okay so you know and the music world that's perfect pitch like she can hear it and match it accordingly and I'm like all right but didn't think anything of it I'm just like okay that's just you know normal I guess it was you know yeah, so and you then, guys may have made a singer <clears throat> keep going some sort of artist yeah she's got um she's very musical she knows how to play harmonica she can do drums 
she's you know like i taught her like you know even though it's not a real guitar but she knows how to do like different things so yeah we'll see <laughs> yeah awesome what you yeah. just described that she can do with the xylophone was why i could never sing i could never match my <laughs> voice to anything exactly. hey, I, i'm a good singer not a great singer i always said as long as i can Stay in a course. Don't make me sing happy birthday by myself, though. Never, ever. <laughs> I ain't getting <laughs> solos. <laughs> Tell everybody about Tessa. <laughs> Is she listening? I don't know. Come I on. know wait. she will be. Wait, wait, I got to check. That's okay, I haven't got a text yet. I must be doing okay. No, just kidding. <laughs> no, um, you know what? She's, you know, um, I know it's going to sound kind of funny, but uh, she's my ride or die. And what I mean by that is... Uh, she, um, my, my biggest thing about just friendships or relationships in general, and that's why I think I've always respected our relationship is uh, we respect each other and accept each other, you know, and, you know, there could be times when I do something that you don't agree with or vice versa, but we would never go, you know, like, rah, 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 and talk, you know, blah, blah, blah about it. So it's like, okay, well, that's the choice it's made. And I've always been like that. And she's truly been the first, you know, like, long-term relationship I've had where I've been like, wow, you actually do accept me for the good and the bad, not just, you know, whenever it makes you good, you know, or that type of thing. And not to ridicule any person I've ever dated before, but you know, it's just, it's a different, a different sense of maturity. So, you know. And, and that's what it is, my friend. I, I hate to jump in on your, yeah, no worries. Yeah. It's maturity. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's well, deciding I there's something worth being that person for. Yeah. And she's told me straight up, she goes, you know, like, she's funny, like, uh, sometimes she's embarrassed, like, oh, you know, we'll maybe, you know, when we could like go out to dinner with some, you know, friends, you know, mine, the colleagues that I grew up dancing with and stuff. And like, she'll sit there. And then afterwards on the car ride home, she's like, wait, so you did what job? Like you did this job? Like, then I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, we were, we did this. And, you know, we we're in Costa Rica doing that again. And she was like, oh, oh, okay. And that's what I love about her. Like, it's not about what I did and what I, you know, the, the success that I've had maybe in dance, it's more about like, I'm a good dad, I'm this and that. And oh yeah, by the way, he's a pretty good dancer. Like, you know, I mean, it's, it's all meshed in together, which I love, you know, cause that's kind of how I look at it. You know, you that's know. a gift, my friend. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. So I just day by day. All right, all right man. Okay, dude. Um, tell <laughs> me first convention you ever tarred on. <laughs> Well, and how old were you? I was, I want to say either 16 or just turned 17 because it was the summer. I covered for Art, Art Stone came to me because I want to say I was on tour with as Mr. Dance Olympus. I think it was that summer. So I would have been 16 because my birthday's in July. So I, I don't know. But anyways, um, I literally, yeah, I, was, I think it was 16. Um, it was in San Diego on that, on this, on this VIP tour. And for some reason, the tap teacher didn't show up and, you know, whether it was, he just couldn't make it or this and that. And so art comes to me and goes, can you teach a tap class? And I was like, uh, sure. And so I got out my cassette <laughs> and, you know, like <laughs> I put it in, I told the, I told the class, I'm like, Hey, look, y'all, I didn't know I was going to do this, but let's just do this. I, I think this is a cool song. You know, it was, a, it was like a, do you remember the cassette singles, the cassette singles? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And one side had the normal and the other side had the remix dance version. So, <laughs> so uh, I was just like, Hey, let's just have fun and learn a combo to it and everything like that. And afterwards they came up to me, both Nancy and art, and they've always been incredible with me and supporters. They've been my, you know, my my third or fourth family so to speak and uh uh yeah and afterwards they're like so uh yeah we'd like to hire you this season to do some select cities <laughs> and i was like oh okay didn't realize i was on audition but sure all right that'd be great so that was my first convention class <laughs> i'll jump in on the stones with you for a minute and stop there people <laughs> yeah what do they mean to you my friend um i think it's a little bit what i about respect and accept they always they they treated me with respect throughout every like from being you know and I know it sounds weird to say but as being a 16 15 16 year old coming up through them all the way to like you know three or four years ago you know doing one of the last conventions with them they always were the same with me they always treated me with respect they always were very communicative of, with me uh, they were just they're they were incredible people they were real you know, and, and it's so easy to get consumed in the, 
you know, like Art Stone always would say to me, he's like, you could, you could be a diva with us, you, you know, and one time I think he said, you should have quit us 15 years ago, you know, and I'm like, no, this is where I started. I started. This is, and I will never forget that ever. If they, if they said we're doing one big convention right now and do that, I would go to Bram with Ash. And, you know, that's why I like Bram. Bram's like, you better be there. Like, you know, mm-hmm. he would, he'd be the first person, my boss of a convention now would be like, I should hope, you know, like there would be no questions. And I would be like, well, I'm going to do that, you know, so. Yeah. I'm with you on that. Uh, kind of have a similar story. They end up becoming your family. Mm -hmm. they support you along the way. And I just did a talk with them and I was so happy. Yeah, I saw some of that. That was awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So happy for the world to see the real, like they were real running this. And Mm -hmm. hear this for everybody listening. (laughs) We didn't have any lights or flash or numbers on us or anything. You just went and took class and you go home motivated. Yeah. That was it. You didn't yep. need a reward. You dance for the passion and the sweat. Right. <laughs> or maybe a teacher would call you on the stage. <laughs> and then when they did, you'd forget the combination. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Hatchett, man. First time I bombed. <laughs> Except for that one funky step. I was like, no, that. <laughs> so you just brought up Frank Hatchett. Tell me some of those people who made an impression on you. Um, people listening I mean, will so many like. You know, Bill DeRico was always great with me. Like he, he was just like, he was like my cynical uncle, you know, like, yeah, like, in, yeah. In a, you know, like he'd always keep it real. Like, you know, like in that sense, um, I remember, but uh, Debbie D was amazing. Like a uh, quick little story on that is that, uh, so I went down, you know, after her class and, uh, and I said, I would like to work privately with you. And this was when we were on the VIP tour. She goes, well, I, I mean, when are you in Florida? And I go, no, I want to do it while I'm on tour. And she like kind of looked at me and later she told me, she goes, I, I guess I was like the only person that had, you know, the, the guts to come up to her and just ask her, you know, like it was just, and I didn't even think I was like being rude or any, I was just like, I want to work with you. Like, and she goes, tell you what, um, I'll work with you at seven in the morning before we start class and uh, bring me a coffee and a donut. So sure enough, I showed up seven, <laughs> that coffee and donut, like, and, you know, she was just so big, and especially since the connection with Henry, like, I think she, you know, that was very big, but Frank to me, um, I know I've told the story numerous times with like the kids and stuff, but you know, I, I was, I was, I wasn't the skinny guy that the, you know, the dancer body and all that, like it just never was, you know, I was, I was the short little fat kid in the back, you know, but I, I loved dance. I was having fun. I was doing my best. And so, uh, he, uh, he was teaching, it was, I think it was with dance Olympus. And uh, so he stopped the record, <laughs> by the way, that shows when I was taking it. <laughs> wait, wait, I, when you said tape, I wanted to jump in and say, ah, that's where our age difference comes in. When I worked for Rockstar, we had 45s. Yeah, the 45s and the, the albums. I used to carry my, my case, like when I first started working with Joe, you should ask him that tomorrow. <laughs> so, uh, I but, interrupted you. Keep going. Oh, no, you're fine, man. I, I love this. So, uh, no, but anyway, so he stops the record and he goes, you, you in the back. And he, he always loved telling the story. He, and then he said, all you did was look behind you. <laughs> like, like, and I was the last kid in the back. And I, I just like looked behind, like, who is this? It's like, no, no, you, dude, you, dude, come on up here. So as I'm walking through, I'm hearing like the chuckles and everything. Cause I have like shorts and a shirt on and belly's kind of big, you know? And he's like, all right. <clears throat> he goes, uh, I want you to show that one step, that little bop step. And I was like, hey, man, the teachers asked me to do this. Let's go full out. So I went and like the kids started like cheering and he was just like egging me. You know what it is. And yeah, I, so, uh, I stayed on the on the stage to the end and then he pulled me off to the side. And this is this is what I call tough love, which sometimes gets lost. We could open up that can of worms for this generation. But um, anyways, so he comes up to me, he goes, I got to tell you something, man. And I was like, what? He goes, thanks for helping me. I was like, thank you so much, Mr. Hash. And he goes, I got to tell you something, though. You're a talent, man, but you got to cool it on the pizza and potato chips. And I went, huh? (laughs) He goes, yeah. He goes, but I'm going to tell you this. you got something special that nobody else has. And he goes, and I don't say that very often. And he looked at his assistants, goes, do I? And they're like, like they're shaking their head like really fast, like a chihuahua. And I was like, I'll never forget that whole scenario. And he goes, 
but you got something special, but we got, we got to start working on the dance body thing. We got to start getting back into that, you know? And ever then I went home and I'm like trying to work out and run and you know, do anything I could to get into shape. So it's so <laughs> funny. That's where you went. And that's with him, because I was just going to go back to something you said and say this to you. I know you say you were a short little uh, fat kid, but I remember you dancing with some pretty big people and being in good shape. Oh, yeah. No, I definitely knew, but I never knew I wanted to be a dancer. Like, you know, I just did it because I loved it. And I was just that was my just natural being, you know, like and so. But I, it, it is true, though. You I always tell like, you know, some of my uh, protégés and stuff like um, you need to learn how to play the game, but don't lose yourself within the game. That's the key. How do you keep you doing, you know, and keep you in the whole process? Don't sell out. Don't start doing stupid stuff like drugs or whatever, partying stuff. If, if that's not, that's not the game you want to play. The game is you want to keep you in the game as you do it, you know? Mm. So if you're a unique butterfly, man, be it, but also know how you have to sell yourself to what's now and what's the generation that is, you know? I'm not a big social media guy, but I also know I have to know how the game works enough and help you know, students coming up through me to do that. Like, and it is what it is. <laughs> you know? So, but I got it. I got it. So what do you think of the, what message would you send to the dancer who may be a tap dancer or a hip hop dancer, but oh. is choosing to only focus on that? I know you grew up doing everything. I grew up doing everything. And I think there's some dancers that don't understand. Right. The specialization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you say? Um, The only thing I say is that, uh, you know, I I try not to preach because I know some people can be so inundated with, you know, their passion and their love and you never want to take that away. True. But unfortunately though, too, you're, you're, you know, it's that eggs in one basket type of thing. You're putting everything to that. But I'll say like a lot of times when I teach tap on convention, um, I, I'm always famous for choices. Like, all right, here's a, here's a step. Now I'm going to give you five choices and everybody groans, but they smile because they know the first choice is going to be like my tappers that are in, you know, tap dancers that are in tennis shoes, <laughs> you know, and then the fifth one is for the 10 people in front that are hardcore, you know, that will punch somebody to get off that floor. <laughs> you know, they have to get on it. So, um, but uh I have to interrupt and go, but that's a master teacher, Mike. Yeah, well, you know, that's why I appreciate that. Thank you. I mean, so, uh, but I always tell them this, I go, you know, for all y'all, you know, I always acknowledge my non-tap dancers that take class in a convention setting because it would be very easy to just to walk out or do whatever. And I go, but imagine this though. Imagine, this is my two things. Imagine if you were a tap dancer with a contemporary dancer's unique vision. Imagine if you were a tap dancer with the hip hop style that you could throw into it. Like I love like somebody like a Jared Grimes, like he's so great and he can give you the most like incredible, you know, Nicholas brother performance, but the dude is incredible at hip hop too. And you see it in his natural style, it exudes through and that's what makes him different. So instead of emulating what already exists, take as many different styles and then create your own, you know, and I think that's the biggest thing for me, you know, is just, I tell them, and plus, I always love it. Remember back in the day, ballet was the vegetables of dance, but now everything's very choreographically based. You would agree with, I mean, like, especially yeah. hip hop and contemporary. Well, do you notice that a lot of hip hop and contemporary is very fast, intricate, and rhythmatic? I wonder where you can learn that better than any other art form. And I'm not dogging any other style of dance, but that's where you learn all those things. That's where you can get that base down so you can present that more. So, so that's just a big thing for me. <laughs> As we start to close this, I want to ask you this question for younger listeners who are uh, especially guys, but every dancer out there who are thinking they're at the beginning of this journey. Right. What suggestions do you have uh, um, for survival? For survival. Um, first of all, if you're young, young, um, how can I say this? train as much as you can before you start working. And what I mean by that is train, 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 because once you start working, then it's a whole different, different game and a different learning process. Um, so, you know, and then second thing, obviously the versatility, like, you know, 
you sign up for all the, you know, there are, pro, there are kids that are, I call them professional convention takers. I mean, they do more cities than some of my colleagues teach, you know what I mean? On convention, like it's incredible. So you have this beautiful venue of versatile classes but yet you only go to the two or three that you think you want to do to get that. I go take advantage of it, take everything. And then my last thing is, is that, you know, I guess, and, and I want to open up that can, but if you're going to move on to like college or should I do college, should I go to LA or New York? You're going to do your dream. Your dream. My main thing is that have you learned to manage your life? Because I've seen so many dancers go mm -hmm. to the big city you know, and then all of a sudden they, they have to work at Starbucks to pay their rent and they're not training. They're not auditioning. They're not doing that because they don't know how to do that. And I think you and I grew up in a different world where we knew how to run a dance studio. We had, so by the time I was 17, everyone's like, you moved to LA when you're 17. I was like, stupidly. Yeah. But I never questioned. I knew that I had to do, I had to get three jobs. How much money did you move to LA with? Uh, thank you, Star Power. Thank you, Rising Star. And thank you, uh, uh, Dance Masters. <laughs> At $3,700. <laughs> That's that was... more than many, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, if more people than many. But... Would look at that and go, wow, that's not much. Yeah. It was more than many. Well, especially in the late 80s. And the second thing was, though, is that I had no car. That was my biggest thing. I had a bicycle. And I don't know, visit LA on a bicycle. You ain't going very many places. <laughs> so, my realm of LA was like this big for the longest time. <laughs> but I had, like I said, three jobs, but I, I never had to worry about managing, you know, and then like with Bill Prudish and LA Dance Force and all them, bless their hearts, you know, Randy Allaire and Carol and all them, they gave me opportunities and they worked with me, you know, on, you know, helping me like adjust my schedule where usually they're like, uh-uh, you need nine to four this, you need these classes. But I go to them going, dude, I need to work, you know, and they'd work with me on that. So for was, those who were listening that may not know them, tell our viewers. Uh, well, LA, old LA Dance Force is now what Edge is. And uh, it's still, I know it's run by uh, uh, Bill Prudish and Randy Allaire. And uh, I know Carol Connors is still involved with it a little bit, but it was those three along with uh, two of my deepest friends, but also mentors was Keith Clifton and uh, Rhonda Miller, who's now with Pace. And Keith is still dance makers and, you know, playing his guitar and being amazing. So, um, but they, they were kind of like, they were the new thing. They were kind of like they, the, the trendy thing, you know, of that generation that kind of developed into everything that was now. So. so. I got it. Yeah. Um, I love talking to you because like I said, when we started this, uh, we come from the same place or same upbringing. We don't come from the same place, but that same <laughs> upbringing, same kind of parents, etc. cetera. Um, I like your realness, my friend. You've always been that way. And that's Thank you. what I knew would be good about tonight. As we close this out, I, I, I guess I'm going to ask two questions. Okay. Uh, what have you learned about yourself through this COVID thing? Like, what do you know now that you didn't know three or four weeks ago? Um, it's been, uh, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's like, I think I said at the very beginning, basically getting caught up in the monotony and maybe getting caught up in like, oh, I have to go teach again, where now you're in your living room and just creating that energy. But now, not that I ever didn't appreciate, but I appreciate it a lot more now the, the 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 students and the energy that they brought even if the energy was oh, i don't want to do this it's it was something there's something they go back where i don't know if you've done any online classes but i mean i'm sweating buckets and and i'm swear i had a i read one one teacher says if we go back to normal all the kids are going to think i'm depressed because i end every zoom class like all right you got this this is great and now you're going to go and they're going all right good job kids good job <laughs> they're going to think you're depressed because <laughs> you have to create your own energy and so um i do appreciate that a lot um and then also too is it's kind of almost like made me go back and going okay curriculum wise how's this working you know like and you know i always say i think you've heard me say that a good teacher teaches what they want a great teacher teaches what is necessary and so now you know i can't you know i can't just 
like be there and help them. And cra- I have to figure out a way to teach that same thing. And, and, you know, and it's not my favorite way, but I have to figure that out. So, but my one thing, if I can say one thing, I want to know to, to every studio. And I hope that the, the people that are doing a lot on like online stuff and, but to all the students out there and stuff, especially, okay, this zooming right now and online is a great way to maintain your dance, but not make your dance grow. Like the studio and the classes and the on, you know, the hands on hand, that's what's going to keep the growth going. I, I just, I, I hope Thank that- Thank you for saying that. It's, that's, that's it's not big. about pirouettes. No, 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 no. It's no. getting back to the ba- the basics, the movement, right. the feeling, the, the right. it doesn't matter how good you are at this. It just matters yeah. that you're dancing to music. Yeah. So I think that's been the biggest thing, just, you know, just, and also managing, like managing time, <laughs> especially with family now. I'm like, oh, dad mode off, <laughs> new hat, here we go. <laughs> you know, like it's just, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Or you're teaching, you know, all of a sudden you have the, the dog and the, the kid run through. <laughs> you're like, oh, that was my kid, by the way. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I heard a funny story today from a teacher. She had a two-year-old that is learning to be potty trained, walked in while she was teaching, pulled down her diaper and did her thing. <laughs> in her classroom (laughs) i said that is the best story you need to collect them because even if this is hard right now yeah no that's awesome we're gonna look back and go you know what we did or that this happened we're living through history it's tough i know this is this is history stuff right there yeah Mm -hmm. okay so this is my final question uh What's something that I'd be surprised about and our audience would be surprised about related to Greg Russell? That has nothing to do with dance. <laughs> nothing to do with dance. Oh, man. Uh, well, see, my friends know me, though, that this and that is that, uh, um, is, how can I say, as like hyper, like when I'm talking or I'm like very animated and very like into anything that I'm in the situation. I'm actually extreme chill. Like, like I will just like, if there's everybody's talking and having a great time, like out, I'm just sitting dum de dum watching a little TV, like doing like that. And sometimes like if I go to a studio, let's say, and you know, we go out to dinner afterwards, I think they expect to be like entertained. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. no, I'm good. Thank you. You know, and then we, you know, we talk about anything, you know, with that's not dance. So I think that always surprises a lot of people straight up and plus i'm a sports junkie like i don't have a favorite sport i just love it so it's funny because i know when i see you places you're the guy in the bar by himself eating his dinner watching you know i'll come over tap you on the shoulder say hello but i'm like you yeah i'm different where i don't want to watch the tv there with everybody no. I want to go up to my room, and if I could take my food to my room, I'm even happy. <laughs> That's the best, yeah. <laughs> I can see that, too, yeah. <laughs> it's an escape from the public, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's you, yeah. you have to refresh. Amen, yeah. To be that person that they expect you to be. Is yeah, and that's that's my whole thing is I, I don't want to inundate myself with dance at all times. Like, you know, I want to, I want to do, give it 100%, then back away, and give it again 100%, you know. Agree. Great talk. A lot of listeners will agree with your last statement as well. <laughs> um, I appreciate you and all Thanks. that you do and all that you bring to our community, my friend. And let's stay that. friends till the last step. All right. You're stuck. I'm, I'm gum on shoe, man. I got you. <laughs> so. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. And no, we're all in this together. We're going to make it and we're going to be smarter, better. And we're going to le- know a whole lot more about each other on the other side. That's- Catch Joe tomorrow. He's awesome. <laughs> yes. Well, thanks for bringing that up. He because- talks- he talks dogs a lot. <laughs> I should have started off with that. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> Tomorrow night, you're good. I need you. Tomorrow night, Joe Tremaine, 8 o'clock, and I know it's going to be awesome. Tune in. And also, go over to Regold on YouTube and like or follow that channel because we'd like to begin going live there soon. Thank awesome. you, guys. Thank you, Greg. Thank you.
You guys have a beautiful night. Good weekend.